the fifth day of the WCN Congress, the last day, and uh, we are happy today to uh, do a recap together with Professor Alagucht and uh, Professor Maurice Friedman. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Professor Gücht? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm Ala Gift. I'm Professor of Neurology and Director of the Moscow Research and Clinical Center of Neuropsychiatry. And I'm the elected trustee. And it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks again for the invitation. Thank you. Maurice Friedman, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Maurice Friedman. Um, I am um, a neurologist from Canada, uh, University of Toronto, and Bakerest Health Sciences, and I'm a trustee of the Federa World Federation of Neurology. Yes, and I am uh, Walter Struer, I'm professor of neurology in Tulln, Lower Austria, and I'm chairing the e-communication committee. So, uh, Professor Kücht, may I ask you which session did you attend and what session would you recommend for on-demand viewing? Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, I was not able to attend all the sessions of the Congress. It's physically impossible because sessions run in parallel. And uh, sometimes I felt myself to be a kind of schizophrenic because I was willing to attend many sessions in parallel and at the same time I had some other job to do but I will definitely uh, watch many of them on demand and I think that's a great opportunity so I would recommend if possible to watch all the preliminary sessions and as many uh, main sessions as possible uh, as far as I know, the, it will be open for three months, correct? Yes, correct. So I would highly recommend to watch them. Uh, definitely my attendance was also modulated by, uh, you know, my priorities in research and in uh, uh, the teaching in our center, because I think the best way to improve the teaching in your own center is to see how uh, how eminent people are doing that at the Congress. But let's start from plenary. Uh, we are very much involved also on behalf of the World Federation in uh, post-COVID. And I was uh, very much honored to co-chair their um, WHO working group on post-COVID. So I was definitely interested on uh, post-COVID sessions and uh, my dear friend and colleague Tori Berge gave an excellent overview. It was, I think, on the first day, uh, and it was beautifully chaired by uh, Professor Bill Carroll. So I think this this plenary was really outstanding. It's not only very important, but also uh, at Tori. Uh, may I use the first name? Tori. Yeah, no, no, may I use the first name? I know it's yes, of course, not to of say course. Professor Beggy, but yes. it's like, you know, it's yes. a Tory eminent Professor Beggy. Uh, gave her an overview also with a perspective for further research and for the way forward. And he highlighted uh, gray areas that are currently uh, present, and I would say they are still prevalent in post COVID conditions. So I highly recommend everybody to watch this session. I personally learned a lot, but you know, we are working together with the Tory for decades and I always learn from him. So uh, that was really fascinating. And also, if I might take one more minute, I would like to highlight a session that I was uh, privileged to co-chair. It was the session on the autonomic uh, nervous system. And first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Professor Struhal for the really terrific talk on neurodegenerative disorders and autonomic nervous system. We have a fascinating session, I think. It was really, I enjoyed it very much. And uh, there was a talk by Professor Luciana Saposato about 
the uh, Association of Autonomic Dysfunction and Stroke. And absolutely uh, great talk by uh, Professor Mark Schiltz. Uh, he focused on the association of stress and autonomic disorders. So I, I understand that I'm biased and I confess that I'm biased because I could chair the session. And this is one of the area of my interest in research. But I highly recommend to watch the session as well. Thank you. Thank you. This is very kind. It was a really interesting session. I enjoyed it very much as well. Uh, may I ask uh, Professor Friedman, uh, what would you recommend for post viewing? There, there, there are so many great sessions, and I would really recommend that uh, people go to the on-demand and just watch as many of them as they can. The one that I want to report on today um, is the one on atypical forms of Alzheimer's disease, chaired by Bruno Dubois. There were three presentations. The um, first one was by Sebastian Crutch, and he gave an update on posterior cortical atrophy. And he discussed this very important syndrome that was named by Frank Benson. Uh, he, he gave a, a, a great description of it. Uh, he just, it this is a, a progressive decline in higher order visual function. And he made the point that um, although Alzheimer's is the most common cause of this disorder, it can be due to other conditions. And he gave examples, uh, dementia with Lewy bodies and cortical basal uh, degeneration. And he highlighted that um, it po the parotoccipital atrophy. So that's a great talk for um, uh, a review on posterior cortical atrophy. Then Maria Luisa Timpini gave a great talk on the different forms of the primary progressive aphasias. And she made the point that it's aphasias with an S because there's more than one. Um, and she described uh, the um, three types, the non-fluent agromatic uh, variant, semantic variant, um, uh, PPA as well, and the logopenic uh, progressive aphasia. And um, the, um, she also pointed out that log logopenic progressive aphasia is usually due to Alzheimer's disease. The other two variants are usually due to the frontal temporal lobar degeneration spectrum. A very key point that she made, um, and, and I appreciate it that she made it, is that the, the you know the non-fluent variant, it's called non-fluent, um, but patients don't have to be non-fluent in the beginning. They don't start off non-fluent necessarily, so they can be fluent at the beginning. And that, that's a good point of, um, of uh, a clarification, great educational value. So she gave a, an excellent talk and I'd highly recommend that um, as an overview of the primary progressive aphasias. The last talk um, was an excellent talk by Frederica Augusta uh, on neuroimaging um, uh, approach to atypical forms of Alzheimer's disease. She focused on posterior cortical atrophy and logopenic progressive aphasia. She described the different patterns of at atrophy. She described the distributions of amyloid and tau. Um, and she also talked about the role of connectivity and the role of co connectivity in the modulation of disease. So I would highly recommend um, uh, this symposium for the ap atypical forms of Alzheimer's disease. But I said at the beginning, there are so many great talks. Um, the on-demand is going to be up for, I believe, um, as I just heard, about three months. And I would highly recommend that people go through those. So that's my update. Thank you very much. Um, uh, from uh, my side, um, I would like to uh, point out one session I visited today, which is Child Neurology in Resource Poor Settings. Uh, and three speakers that had been uh, Joe uh, Wimshurst, uh, Richard Idro, and Pratipa Singhi gave a wonderful overview on uh, the challenges uh, that uh, children are facing uh, to reach a doctor and how uh, management can be done, how large uh, scales of the population uh, can or could be treated. Um, some of uh, the challenges are also internet connectivity and um, uh, the, the advantages of telemedicine uh, in areas where no doctors are available. Dr. Idro pointed out that uh, there are nine 
uh, child neurologists uh, for more than 100 million people in Eastern Africa. So uh, that are numbers uh, that is an extreme challenge. And uh, those uh, colleagues are doing a fantastic work also in delivering the service. And another session I want to find out was advocacy today. Uh, it was an advocacy teaching course uh, that uh, was uh, chaired by Mohamed uh, Vasai and uh, Wolfgang Griesold. And advocacy, as uh, Professor Griesold points out, is, uh, is a topic that is not an appendix to neurology, but it's somehow innate in uh, delivering neurology. And uh, therefore, I would also highly recommend that session uh, you get uh, the, the, the viewers also on, on, um, on viewing on demand, get some in view in how to do advocacy, the levels of advocacy, uh, what you can do at which um, level. And this uh, advocacy uh, teaching course also was focusing on regions. Uh, that's giving a nice overview in how, um, how distinct advocacy can be in different regions of the world. So uh, I think this was a brilliant Congress. Um, I'm really sorry that it's over already. Um, and it's not over, uh, as you all have pointed out. Uh, since uh, the content of this Congress is so huge, um, the chance of having a, a on-demand viewing of uh, contents of this Congress has to be taken up. And I um, also, uh, would motivate all our audience to take this chance. You have the chance to, uh, to view all the content and review it uh, also. Um, I will, uh, for some sessions I have uh, attended, I will uh, review again because uh, they, were, they are so rich on information that there is also a second time of view. Uh, something can be taken uh, away from it. And um, thank you very much for uh, also this uh, last day of recap uh, to Professor Gücht, uh, to Professor Friedman. Uh, we are all looking forward to uh, the Congress in 2023, which will be in Canada. Maurice Friedman, do you want to give us some, some info on the next Congress? Yep, the next Congress uh, is going to be great, um, as great as this one. It'll be in Montreal in 2023. So we are all meeting there, hopefully in person. So yes, it was hopefully a pleasure. In person. Hopefully in person. It was a pleasure talking to you, Professor Kirsten, Professor Friedman. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much.